My name is Mike Michon. I'm head of the Moving Image section here at the Library of Congress, the home of the largest collection of film and video in the world. Today we're at the Packard Campus for Audiovisual Conservation in Culpeper, Virginia, a facility that opened in the summer of 2007. It's dedicated to preserving our audiovisual heritage. Within this building we have not only the film, video, and sound recording collections of the library, but we also have preservation laboratories that are dedicated to making sure that all of this material is available for future generations. So we have in the collection the original camera negative or Birth of a Nation. Now this is, in 1915, this is the apex of cinema. Everything that D.W. Griffith has learned about cinematic grammar he throws into this film. It is an astonishing work. It's full of, of amazing storytelling techniques, terrific acting, beautiful editing. It is truly one of the most important films in the history of the evolution of narrative cinema. Unfortunately, it's also one of the vilest racial tracks in the history of American cinema. So Griffith was an unreconstructed racist uh, who had very, well, be, to be kind, paternalistic attitude toward African Americans. So Birth of a Nation is a story of the Civil War and Reconstruction based on a novel by a man named Thomas Dixon called The Klansman. It tells a story of families that are torn asunder by the Civil War. Uh, and I mean, this, the portrayal of Southerners uh, in the film is very, very sympathetic, I mean, including the fact that the, the, the rescue at the end of the film is affected by the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, so this is a film that is very difficult to watch out of context. Uh, people who see it today, people who come to it fresh, without knowing the background, without knowing the era, uh, find it a very difficult film uh, to, to deal with. Uh, but it's you know, part of our job to provide the context for the film. I'm not excusing the inherent and grotesque racism of the film. You know, I can look at it uh, you know, as a social historian, you can look at it one way, it's very much a piece of its time, but as a cinema historian, you, you can still admire the technique that D.W. Griffith brought to this film. It, as, a, as a film, it's, it's astonishing. As a cultural document, it's still astonishing, just in a different way. <laughs>